If you're getting blocked trying to scrape Instagram data in 2020, then welcome to the new normal. Unfortunately, the good old days of 2019, where just about everything on Instagram was in the public domain, are behind us. But don't worry, I have a new, unblockable scraping technique you can use with Instagram. And it doesn't require any proxies or session IDs or anything hacky like that. Make sure you watch until the end and I'm gonna do a demo for how it works. But first, the backstory. If you've seen some of my older videos from 2019, I talk about how anyone could hypothetically scrape public data from Instagram, like a follower list and all their email addresses in the order of 4 million profiles in just a few hours. I say hypothetically because it was and still is against the Instagram terms of service to use automated access on their servers. So I can't encourage anyone to do this. I'll just say that there are people out there who were doing this and who are having problems now. So back in those olden days when everything was public on Instagram, they only enforced rate limiting, basically how much data you could access in a given amount of time based on someone's IP address. So you had all these people out there running bots just on different proxies and IP addresses, and they were able to kind of fan out and scale out their scraping bots to collect a lot of data from Instagram. Instagram apparently did not like this. Instagram didn't like this so much, they further proceeded to sue people for doing this sort of abusive behavior on their servers. You can learn more about this. I go into it in my Facebook video. I'll have a link in the description if you wanna get more into these details. Moral of the story though is that Instagram is really cracking down. You don't want to mess with this sort of stuff anymore, where before they didn't really enforce it, but now I'm warning you they're beginning to enforce it, and the consequences are severe. For example, now that you need to be logged into Instagram in order to view anything, Instagram has the authority to ban you from accessing their site. And the clever part is, once they tell you to stop accessing their site, if you try to reaccess it, it may, repeat may, this is a very gray legal area, say that you're guilty of trespass. Because it's like, if I ban you from coming to my bar and say, hey, don't come back here, and you come back here, I could then call the police. When you have public data, the way Instagram had before in 2019, they couldn't do that. That's why we need to be especially careful now. But just for fun, disclaimer, I'm not advocating this, do not do this. Let's just play devil's advocate and see what we would need to do if we wanted to continue down this road of automated access and why it's more trouble than it's worth. So from what I've heard from other people now is that because you need to be logged in to scrape Instagram data, they're imposing limits on how many profiles per day you can look at, followers per day, etc. Some accounts can look at a few hundred profiles per day and maybe if they hit the limit, they get banned. And other accounts I heard are able to look at like a thousand profiles a day or possibly more usually if they've been around or they have a higher hypothetical trust score I've heard rumors about, I don't really know for sure. The point is now they need to be logged into scrape data, not only can Instagram kick you out, but they can also limit how many profiles and pieces of information you can scrape every day. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I'll just create a hundred different Instagram profiles and use them each to scrape, and split up the work so they each do a little bit of scraping each. You could probably do this, but at this point we're getting past a few boundaries that I have. One is ethical. I don't think it's right to create a bunch of fake accounts. Uh, you're just polluting Instagram. You're making the platform worse for normal people. And two, you're now over-engineering something. Like, do you really need this much data so quickly? I feel like that's a symptom that something may be off in your digital marketing or whatever you're trying to do. It's getting to the point out where, where the cost outweighs the potential reward you can get. And lastly, this is really stupid from a legal perspective because the moment you start doing your scraping from hundreds of accounts, it is the definition of abuse. And you're giving that evidence to Instagram and when they catch you, they're gonna have evidence of you trying to scrape from hundreds of accounts and they'll have no problem saying you're guilty of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. I just know a lot about this. This is not legal advice. So for these reasons and more, I think it's clear that what worked in 2019 when this was more of a light gray legal area because the data was public, it's not going to work anymore in 2020. We're now in a dark gray legal area where it's more risky. 
because Instagram controls access to the data. And if you try to circumvent that, then I think they will have a pretty easy time of going after you for abuse and or fraud. And also they've clearly demonstrated through a history of legal cases this year, they mean business. So is this the end of scraping Instagram? Oh no. And today for the first time ever, I'm gonna do it on camera because I've discovered the unblockable way to scrape Instagram data. Are you listening? Make sure no one else is around. It's called obey their terms of service. But that's all right. With a new free tool I'm gonna to show you, you can just merrily browse Instagram normally, visit the profiles, the comments, the likers, the hashtag posts you're interested in, and then stop using Instagram and get the data out of your history later. This way, per the Instagram terms of service, the collection of Instagram data from their servers occurs while we use the site normally. And then after we have that data copied onto our computer in the form of a web archive or web traffic history recording, we can then scrape the data into a more usable way, like transform it into JSON or CSV format after we're done using Instagram. And this is totally legal because we're just recording web traffic using an open source tool like Google Chrome and then saving that traffic log to our computer and we're just post-processing that file, inspecting our own network traffic like any network admin would do or you're entitled to do once the data has been sent to your computer. This may be a gray area, but it's a much safer gray area than automatically accessing Instagram servers. That's very dangerous. You can learn more about the legal implications in that Facebook video I mentioned. There's a link in the description where I talk about it in depth. Let's get to a demo now. Let's say we want to do research about a particular Instagram profile and we want to go and get the basics, like get their follower list and look at all their posts and see what the comments are saying in the posts. We use our web browser and we just go to Instagram.com normally. The only thing we do different now is we need to record our web traffic so we can scrape the data out of it later. We just right click somewhere on the page and hit inspect. This opens up developer tools, which means we're now recording the network traffic that Instagram sends to our browser as we browse through the site. So I'm just gonna go to my own profile. You can use this on any profile you have access to. I'm gonna get my followers. So I click on my followers and I just scroll through the list, close it out and let's get all my posts. So I'm just gonna click on the post and then scroll through them all. I can see the comments are loading, the recent ones. Once I'm done browsing all the data I want to scrape, I then go to the network tab and click this export HAR button. This is gonna download what's known as a HAR file to my computer containing the raw network traffic that Instagram sent to my computer while I was browsing, containing that precious structured data we're after. All right, so what do we do with this HAR file? Well, there aren't a whole lot of tools to work with them, which is why I created one that's available for free. No strings attached, link in the description. You simply drag and drop the HAR file into the tool and it will automatically analyze all the network requests that were made and group together the ones that return similar JSON. This lets you quickly find the related requests like when we we're paginating through the followers and our posts, I can see them all here and I can download the raw JSON here from the free tool. It found two main groups of requests. One of them looks like all the individual requests for my followers and the other one looks like all the individual requests for my posts. I can click on each one individually and download the JSON. So I could then write a program to stitch all this JSON together to give me one master list. If I'm not sure where the data is in this HAR file, I can go back to Instagram and find some identifying piece of text that's gonna point me to where it is in the HAR file and then just search for it in the free tool and it'll show me exactly the network request and response data from where it found that text. And then I can see here, this text is coming from one of my post captions and I can download the raw data behind that post caption. So this is cool, but what if I wanted my follower list in a single CSV file and I don't want to fiddle around with all those little JSON files and try to combine them together. That sounds like a lot of work. Well, for premium Steve C data users, they'll see this parse button here, which will automatically convert the JSON from Instagram into a format known as collections on the Steve C platform, which flattens everything out and makes it more usable. It will then combine collections together 
So I take that list of all those individual followers and get it into one big root collection. And then I can just download that to my computer and I'll have a list of all my followers in a matter of 10 seconds. Since this tool is totally generic and can work with any JSON format or any format out there, I can also try it with my posts. So let's see if I can get all my posts back in the collection system. I'll just go and click the parse button and get my collections. I can see here the root collection contains all of my posts. I can see my own captions here in this field. And if I scroll down here, I can see another collection for all the comments on my posts. And if I download this, I'll get a CSV file. So I can see on the left hand side are the individual comments left by me and my followers. And on the right side is a reference to the individual post. So I can cross reference where the comment came from. And we can browse around. There's a little bit more data that was parsed out here, like links to the images and videos, etc. So this is neat, but it still doesn't solve the email scraping problem. Isn't Instagram going to cut me off after I look at a few hundred profiles so I try to get emails? Well, yeah. And you know what? There's nothing we can do about that. Instagram's a private company. They owe us nothing. If they don't want us scraping emails, they can enforce that. So like I said earlier in the video, you can try and get around this, but it's very risky because there's part of it where it could be considered abusive because then you're going to have to create a bunch of different accounts. So I don't advise doing this. Maybe this is actually a good thing. In my opinion, I would rather be able to scrape and get to know the details of 300 highly targeted and relevant accounts to my offer. Let's say maybe I want to go through all of my followers. I have hundred or something of them and better understand them, see what they post about. That data to me is 10 times at least more valuable than a list of 100,000 random untargeted emails. What am I going to do with that list? I'm going to blast them an unsolicited email offer and no one's going to respond to it. Maybe one person will and then 50 other people will report me for spamming. I'm going to violate the GDPR if I do that. Or there's really not a whole lot of good that can come out of all those email lists personally. I know that there's a right way to do email marketing. I've never done it. I prefer creating content like this and then put it in places that people find it. So I'm just saying, rethink, do you really need all those email addresses? Or maybe it's worthwhile to instead rethink your digital marketing now and say, well, you know, this is new. Now I can finally go deep on a set of profiles and really analyze them here by clicking around and then exporting their data that I can scrape. So I'm sure I'm upsetting some people right now who are dependent on scraping emails. So if this is you, you know, really let me have it. Just dislike this button, hit it twice to make sure it really sticks. So that's it. Check out the link in the description if you're tired of getting blocked while trying to scrape Instagram data. Please like if you learned something, subscribe if you want to see more, and let me know in the comments your feedback and if you have any other websites you want to see me scrape. Thank you for watching and stay data driven.